So, what's up, guys? This is Wolf Thundering, aka Korag Wolzord. We're to going over Mark Sanctuary. He just got revealed today, so let's get this started. So, Alfred's effect kind of remained intact here. When your Blaster Blade Liberator is placed from your deck, this unit gets plus 10k in critical until the end of the turn. Then it has a limit break 4 effect. Soul Blast 2, Counter Blast 3, to put all of your rear guards and lock cards on top of your deck. Then you call the, recall those cards. It doesn't even have to be 5. It can be like 2 cards and you call like 3 more cards if you wanted to. And then during your turn, this card gets 1,000 power for each of your rear guards. Okay, that's really good. Zoran, when placed from your deck, put this unit into your soul to look at 3 cards from the top of your deck and call a Liberator card. So this is interesting because I've never even seen or heard of Zoran, so seeing it now is actually going to be helping this guy keep his soul intact. So let's go over this bad boy. The Limit Break 5 effect, when you call Blaster Blade from your deck, isn't limited. You can get a 3-crit Monarch Sanctuary Alfred if you play this correctly. Say you have 2 BBLs in your hand, 2 Bottle Wings, you get a Counter Charge, you get a Retire, you get a Counter Charge, you clean up your opponent's field, recall everything, this becomes a 3-crit Beat Stick, so on and so forth. This unit also gets 1,000 power, so he gets 5,000 from 5 rears. So he's a 16k with a 5k in the back, gives him up to 2100. So a nice little thing there. Uh, possibility is, you know, maybe you might be running one Joseph as a tech card. Because um, if you technically play Joseph in the back, and you do this effect, you technically are soul blasting three cards to draw one if you need it. But honestly, I really think we're going to be very limited on the G1s here. Because Zoran, I think, is replacing some cards. The fact that Zoran, when he gets called from the top of the deck... From your deck, he just has to get placed from your deck. You get to call a Liberator from the top three. So how does this help you? It helps you in a lot of ways because we have Zenith now. Zenith can get called and call you a Blaster Blade Liberator, which calls you a possible Intercept Retire because you have Ballin in the back row. So there's going to be a lot of good things when it comes to playing Zoran. With the amount of stuff like Monarch Sanctuary Alpha is bringing, he's going to have a lot of good tech. The thing about Monarch Sanctuary, when you break right on top of Mr. Gantz a lot, uh, you actually get a free BBL in general. So let's talk about let's talk about a big final turn play. You're at five damage. Say you didn't spend any CB. You BBL, you retired one. Good. You do the CB three, call five cards. Bada bing, bada boom. You were able to recharge because you went back to CB four because you wrote, you played a Blaster Blade Liberator where a balling column was. So you have 4 CB, you return everything back to the deck, you place Ballin first in the back, number order does matter or your effects won't go off correctly. Your Ballin has to be placed first in the back, and then you play BBL. That BBL is also going to retire a second unit for a CB5 effect. Because this is a big final turn play for White Liberator Monarch Sanctuary Alfred. You'll be getting a 3-crit three, a two, three crit beat stick with just one Blaster Blade Liberator. Okay. And you got the retires in because of Baldwin. Now, hypothetically speaking, say you had two Baldwins on each column, and you had two Blaster Blades coming out each turn. AKA, you're going to be able to counter charge two, retire. This is one big final turn play, and this dude's going up to three crits. That's actually really, really good to see how he's going to function, Alfred. He is bringing a lot. And with Zoran, if he's in your hand. He's not a dead card. He actually plays his role once this card gets rode upon. Once Monarch Sanctuary Alfred is out and about, you have a chance to call another Blaster Blade Liberator. If you have your ball and combo set up, you will be able to do this Blaster Blade Liberator combo again, counter charge, clean up, do this, do that, and you have yourself a three critter that automatically ends the game. There is no six damage heal on this fifth damage because you're going for the three hit. Now, what else could you do? Could you not retire? Maybe wait a turn, CB1, CB1, and then just go from there. Maybe if you draw Zenith, you go for game. If he lived, say you had three PGs and you top deck Zenith because, you know, you had your PG and you lived that turn. Why not? Why not? You can do that. You can ride Zenith for the final turn. He is the final damage. After you just did a big play of retiring everything with your ball and combo, you'll have one CB left to make a play. At least you should if you have a CB5. You should be able to. So with that being said, you'll be able to do a lot there. You'll be knocking out the first PG actually with Monarch Sanctuary Alfred if they're at 4th damage and you hit a trigger and that trigger goes to your Blaster Blade. So you're going to be able to swing at 21k possibly and you'll be good to go from there. 
the point of this um, Monarch Sanctuary Alfred, he has a good loop effect for your Blaster Blade Liberators, and you can get the effect off a little bit more than you think. With Zoran in the deck, this is going to increase your odds. And now, when you think about it with Trumpeter, now that we have Trumpeter, he's going to be able to keep putting a Blaster Blade back into the deck, so you'll always have a Blaster Blade on standby when calling from the top five cards of your deck. There's going to be a Blaster Blade Liberator somewhere. It's either going to be in your deck or you're somehow going to draw it again. There's so many ways to get Blaster Blade Liberator now. Now you have Zoran that can look for Zenith. Anything Zenith related, you can just call that. It goes back in the deck. You get yourself a free Blaster Blade Liberator. And then you can do a CB2 effect. Destroy his intercept game. Yeah, this, this is really good. Zoran is now amazing. Say you can even call this a star. Again, you put it in the soul. You get yourself a back row. I mean, you're legit prepping your two balance, balance for, like, the game here. And if you have two BBLs, it's going to be pretty much CB1 for each retire if you have the ball in plays. And if you're at fifth damage, again, you could do this again by countercharging. You'll be able to countercharge after you CB3. So you have CB for another turn for another unit like Zenith to finish off the match. Honestly, Zoran made this so good zoran in general is good just from being called from the top of the deck could this even help you with your wolf and garber plays of course it can because if you didn't get your intercepts you now have another chance to get intercepts that won't die from retires so zoran can even play another while in other liberator decks as Krat calls it guess what now you can put it in the soul and get a different card that you need it's like are you looking for the booster you need you need Val? you can go get Val and go do your thing so it all really comes down to how you set up your field and how you play out your Alfred. Would you hold Baldwin in your hand in case of Link Joker play so you can actually do the combo with when you have CB5 and go for those big, big, big number games if you're not healing, hypothetically, and just do work? And if you see a Zenith amongst your top five cards after returning two cards, that's a win because that is BBL for free. You get two intercepts at the end of that. Soul Blasting 2 isn't so bad due to the fact Zoran goes into the soul, managing your soul. You'll be able to at least do this effect twice if it comes down to I don't see you doing this effect twice. Obviously, you're possibly going to Zenith to finish the game for extra attack pushing and just doing everything in general. Yeah, Monarch Sanctuary Alfred is good. Really good. He's going to be able to go 3 critical for final turn if he needs be. Blaster Blade is easily now recite. We all knew this was coming when Zenith got that effect. So every time we call Zenith, it's BBL. Baldwin, Baldwin combo is prepped, Baldwin's in the back, BBL comes out, you retire, there you go, another hit. You have many ways to retire. You open up your opponent's field very easily with just the BBLs, and if you have the counter charger in the back, Baldwin, you're gonna be able to smack like a mofo. That much I can tell you. So, wow, it's just seeing this in Zoran is adding more lib depth. Libs have so much thinning going on. You could even possibly run stands, maybe. I mean, I would say it'd be, it would depend on, like, how you go about things. But, like, in reality, it's, uh, it's really good. It's honestly really good. Trumpet is going to set things right with Alfred. And Zoran in this and it's just amazing. The only thing is, I do like where Zoran's at. It is a lot of draw power here. But, like I said, you might be able to, like, a, I mean, Monarch Sanctuary Alfred is going to be one giant final push turn. By just calling these units, you'll always have an intercept game, especially if you keep calling your Zenith, and there's Zenith left in the deck. You'll always get your BBL, so you're guaranteed intercepts from at the end of the day. This with Trumpeter is already amazing enough. Trumpeter already brought this unit to light. Zoran, so you have many chances to set up columns, set up plays, thin your deck, and get the pieces you actually need to finish the match. So a lot, a lot of ways to go about Monarch Sanctuary, Alfred. Honestly, this guy's going to be nuts. Now that we have counter chargers, if they made this a CB3, he would have been way too stupid. The fact that it's a CB3 is a godsend that it's not busted. CB3 keeps them balanced, so it's up to you to have your ball ones prepped and your BBLs ready to rock and roll and cleaning up the board and going for game. But that's why I said we're possibly going to Zenith to heal at the end of the day because Zenith is definitely going to be a finisher. Because this effect, the Limit Break 4 isn't bound by anything. Just the Limit Break 5. You won't get a crit, but you have a giant number you can swing with. And if you clean up the board, you're good to go. So there's that. And you're guaranteed some hitboxing here because it'll be at 21k. 
so on and so forth. So with that being said, that's going to conclude our discussion on Liberator Alfred and his faithful companion Zoran. Zoran being called. It's like goes in the soul. Get a card you want. There you go. Golds have so many G1s you can work around with. You just have to make sure you focus on a certain build. Because obviously Zoran is a big, big Alfred build. And Zoran can be ran in a Garmer build as well. Could you use Zoran in... As even with Zenith attacking, I mean, if he calls, if he calls Zoran, Zoran goes in the soul. You call a different unit. If he didn't have a trigger, obviously you got to keep the boost at the end of the day. But still, yeah, even if Zenith calls Zoran, Zoran goes in the soul. You can still get an intercept and protect yourself. A lot of things with lips. A lot of things. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our discussion. I hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all be good. Y'all stay safe. Glendios is coming up very soon, guys. So be prepared. Because he is the last unit and a couple of his cards will be shown soon enough. Peace out. Till next time.